We're talking with Greg Harris, CEO and president of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Coming up on Saturday, it is the Rock Hall induction ceremony. It's going to stream over on HBO at 8 East, 7 Central, and then it'll be available on HBO Max. It was a six-hour event. They've condensed it down to three for us to be able to sit and watch it at home. Greg, you know, I, I know earlier in the year, you had made the statement that this one, this event, could be one for the ages. Did it live up to your expectations and that quote? Uh, yes, it did. It was um, certainly one for the ages. It had so many, so much variety and mashups and connection that were just kind of off the charts. And what I mean by that is, you know, the honorees, I think folks will remember, it's Eminem, the great hip-hop artist, Pat Benatar, Duran Duran, the Arrhythmics, Lionel Richie, Carly Simon, Judas Priest, uh, Dolly Parton, and others, a very diverse class. And when you have um, Sheryl Crow inducting Pat Benatar, and then you have The Edge from uh, U2 inducting the Arrhythmics, and then these mashups where Rob Halford of Judas Priest burned it down with his band. Then he came out later and sang a duet with Dolly Parton to Jolene. Um, just unbelievable and amazing and really fun. That was cool. And especially I know Rob talked about in advance how he was bound and determined to get that selfie with Dolly Parton. And then he's on stage with her. <laughs> he got it all right. And he shared a microphone with her. It was amazing. In terms of those performances, do you have a lot of say in it or do the artists just have free reign in terms of those mashups? Um, you know, there's <clears throat> there's great show producers. There's um, a fellow named John Sykes, who's our foundation chairman, um, and also Joel Parisman, our foundation president. They really work on the, the specifics of the show. And you find connections, you find stories, and you find ways to connect generations. Um, and that's really what does it. You know, I think... Everybody was blown away when Lionel Richie uh, was performing. I think it was all night long. And Dave Grohl came out and played lead guitar and then sang um, a chorus with him. You know, stuff like that that you just can't, you know, you, you can't imagine is going to happen when you walk into theater. And then suddenly it, it's there and it's on stage. Yeah, it's certainly a special moment. Looking forward to that tomorrow night when we get to see it over on HBO. Being the president of the Rock Hall and the CEO, uh, you have you know, a team, like you mentioned, they're putting the whole induction ceremony together. But for you, do you get to take the night off or are you running around helping no. things? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place. Uh, part of it is greeting and welcoming artists in the press room, letting them know that we have a major exhibit at our museum in Cleveland that we want them to visit. Um, and welcoming them to this exclusive club of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. There's only about 360 inductees in the entire history of rock and roll that are honored. So there's those pieces. And then once the, the guitars are plugged in and the music starts, I, I tend to just soak it all in and enjoy it. Um, and um, invariably, I, I forget when I, I, I invariably, I, I just get riveted by the show and I watch it for maybe a little bit more than I should. Uh, but it was incredible and well worth it. And everybody in the theater uh, at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles had a blast. Uh, Judas Priest, along with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, they got the Music Excellence Award. And I quote from the Rock Hall, it's given to artists, musicians, songwriters, and producers who whose originality influence creating music have had a dramatic impact on music. Now, are those classified as full inductions like Pat Benatar, Eminem, and Duran Duran got this year? Uh, that's a great question, Yes. They are. Um, you can be elected to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on the general ballot, or you can be elected through the committee process. And the reason for that is, you know, picture a producer or an executive being on the general ballot and going up against um, the Foo Fighters or some bands like that. It just isn't uh, that level of a playing field. So industry people that have knowledge of the um, of the art form that know what it really takes to be the best of the best. Those are the committee members and they put people in through committee, but they're all equal. Once they're in the hall of fame, they're all rock and roll hall of fame inductees. Their plaques look identical uh, in Cleveland and they're, they're identical. You know, this year Judas Priest went in through that process and um, they perform just like everybody else. And they're, they're inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame, just like every other artist. Now, the class of 22 is done. We're looking ahead, I assume now, at the class of 23. We know that general rule, 25 years from your first release. But from your end, what goes into the general consideration process before naming the nominees each year? Yeah, you know, there's a nominating committee meeting 
that will happen in January. And the committee is pretty incredible. It's about, you know, 24 people. Uh, we meet in a room and everybody nominates two. And there's healthy discussion and discourse. You learn so much about uh, types of music that maybe you didn't um, follow as closely as others on the committee. And out of that committee, a ballot uh, emerges of usually about 17 to 19. And then that ballot goes out to all the other living inductees, as well as historians and writers and some industry people, and they vote. And when the votes come back, the top five or six vote getters are inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, you talk about that committee coming together and discussing. Do you pay a whole lot of attention to like fan petitions? Because I know there's a big one going around right now looking to try to get in excess into the Rock Hall. You know, th that committee that meets really, you know, these are people that have spent entire careers in the music business and they got into it because they were fans first and foremost. Some of them are historians and, and university based. Uh, others are actual musicians and artists that have an amazing um, passion and not deep knowledge of music. So, you know, Quest Love is on that committee from the roots and uh, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters is on that committee and a few others. So, you know, their, their, um, their knowledge and expertise really means a lot. Um, some of the, the petitions and other things help people understand what the fans view is and the fans view is always important, but I have to say that these committee members uh, each have, um, you know, a depth of knowledge that uh, is, is pretty strong and, and that's usually what carries the day. You worked at the baseball hall of fame, I believe for like 14 years before coming to the rock hall. What's the biggest difference for you uh, between the two? You know, they're, they're both terrific places that um, celebrate, um, you know, these amazing American art forms, rock and roll and, and baseball that means so much to so many people like cultural touchstones. So I see a lot of similarities um, between us, um, you know, honoring the greats and living and breathing museums that are changing all the time. Rock and roll is always changing and baseball is always changing and evolving. So history is being made uh, as we as we live it today and we look at the past as well. So I see a lot of similarities and um, I think they're both great places. I've been really fortunate to be at them. And we'll wrap with this question. You co-founded and co-owned a record store in the eighties. Uh, the way we consume music has changed so much over the years, even with the resurgence of, um, you know, vinyl over the last decade or so. What do you see as in terms of the legacy with the rock hall and music itself throughout the generations to come? We'll know more about older music than they have in generations because it's so accessible online and through different streaming services. And there's also been a huge resurgence in vinyl. Um, I have a son that's in college and we uh, uh, have started, he started on vinyl as well. And we were listening to some Bruce Springsteen and some, uh, I'm looking at records right now, I'm at home and some, uh, the box tops and squeeze and other bands that uh, are on vinyl. We've been playing vinyl lately. And I think a lot of young people are doing that. So, you know, rock and roll is always gonna keep changing. And thankfully, we'll always be able to hear the stuff that spoke to us at these important moments in our lives. And I hope we can keep our, our mind open to what's new and keep chasing new music. It's very invigorating. Uh, before we do all that, watch this induction broadcast on HBO on Saturday night. It will blow you away. And it was a great evening. Looking forward to it, Greg. Thank you for the time and uh, have a great day and stay warm. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye now.